Uh, hey guys, welcome back to the Lights Off podcast. We're on episode eight uh, today. If you haven't already, obviously, make sure you subscribe uh, to keep up to date. Uh, but today, I've got a dear friend of mine um, on the podcast today, Charmaine McMinimum. Hey sis, thank you so much for coming on today. Hey sis, thanks for having me. Excited? Right. Uh, pretty exciting, to be honest. I'm keen for this one. Um, but for those who might not know who you are, please give us a bit of an intro on who you are. Yep. Uh, Charmaine McMiniman, um, most people know me as Charm up here in Auckland, uh, originally not from here, uh, hometown's Gisborne, um, in the east coast of the North Island, um, but yeah, been here for a good 11 something years now, up in Auckland, um, yeah, play footy, um, and currently studying, um, electrical engineering, so it's just like a brief bit about me I guess we'll dive in a bit deeper but later on eh yeah sounds good man that's pretty cool uh we'll, we'll start yeah. from obviously Gizzy um so how was that growing up obviously in the obviously a bit smaller than here in Auckland <laughs> Holy <Just a> tad. <laughs> um, it was good like um I, I was originally born in Wellington um we didn't move up to Gizzy until I was about eight um and that was just purely for the fact that uh, my grandparents, particularly my grandmother, um, wanted to move back home, um, and she went back to our Māori land um, up in Rangatukia, so um, my father, being a mummy's boy, um, wanted to be a bit closer to his mum, so we ended up moving to Gizzy, um, and then I spent my childhood there, pretty much, and, like, it was an amazing place to grow up, like, it was real kicked back, um, you know, there's not a whole lot going on there anyway, so, um, yeah, to make your own fun and you know beaches are just down the road and um just hung out with my mates pretty much most of the time um when mum would let me yeah um, <laughs> it was cruisy eh? like it's such a good lifestyle like um if or oh, when I get the chance I definitely go there to bring my kids up definitely. yeah yeah 100% and um do you come from a big family um so being moldy no no so um, I guess my extended family is really big, so I'm part of the um, infamous Jose Manuels um, from the East Coast, and that family is very massive. Yeah. Um, but my immediate family is very small, so I'm the eldest of three. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, my mum only worked like every six years, so it's six years between me and my sister, and then another six between her and my little brother. So, oh, true. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> only only three of us in the family, um, but in saying that like man we had fun growing up like it's just it's just a real different dynamic like obviously I didn't have them because they weren't close in age but um like my little sister it would be like you know me and her quite tight so um and even my little brother because I pretty much helped mum bring him up because I would have been a bit older by then but um yeah that's our little family not a lot to it but um yeah the extended family is massive um But yeah, immediate family, not so much. Yeah, sick. And then obviously you made the the move to to Auckland. What well, what kind of brought that about? <laughs> so it was like a little bit of a um, I catfished my parents, I'd say. Nice. <laughs> um, so wait, um, let me just take some notes so I can uh, use that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I I remember like finishing school and I like because I'm born in May, I was, like, the younger lot of my year. Yeah. So I was still, like, 17 when, everyone, when we all finished school, and I was like, man, I don't want to leave home. Like, I don't want to leave home till I'm 18. Yeah. Um, and then, so I had a gap year, just worked at home. Um, and then I've always been, like, one to, like, write down goals and whatnot. And I remember at school, like, I had written, like, one of my workbooks, like, um, that I wanted to make like an NZ team by the time I was 21 and you know all this other stuff um so like always been into footy uh I remember like watching the Black Ferns well the 2010 um World Cup like that was unreal and even the one before that and I remember like leaving school just to watch it so in my head I always was like right like I want to be playing rugby at the high yeah. school and then back then like done my research and like majority of the black fans were from Auckland so I was like oh to be the best I have to kind of like play with the best and what's yeah, better than getting to Auckland you know um 
So that was kind of my thinking. But then at the same time, like I had a real interest in physio at the time. So um, I, um, I went in to study um, or applied to study at AUT um, and obviously got accepted. And then that's how I made the move to Auckland pretty much. So in the back of my mind, like I wanted to play footy, but I was just to get there, I decided to obviously study um, at AUT and do physiotherapy. Yeah. Was that your pitch? Was yeah, well, that's what my parents say. I'm going to study. Oh, get here and, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm doing everything but studying, you know? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> um, but obviously, you, you, like you said, you, you had a love for footy already. Was there someone that kind of inspired you to start footy in general or...? Can... No, not really like oh, obviously my like my father's always been like a role model to me um especially in like sports space and I remember growing up like I played every sport under the sun like at school like I played everything yeah. um but it wasn't until like one day my mate was like oh come play rugby like we need some players and I was like oh I don't really know like should I play because it wasn't that I didn't want to play it was for the fact that the older girls were quite scary like being yeah. third form or third form back then and they were seven you know they were like the tough kids at school you didn't really yeah. like mess okay. with them so it was just like oh do I really want to play with them like they're fucking they're scary you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so I was like oh no nah. but then like I went along to one training with my mate and that was it I never like looked back after that um had a few like influential coaches like for me when I was young like they were real helpful um and that's probably why I stayed in it while I was in Gizzy. um mm. And, like, back then we played, like, Hurricanes tournament and all of that. Um, and I guess getting, like, selected for something like that, just the tournament team, um, just made me feel like I could as aspire to do more. Yeah. Um, and I guess that just, like, kind of fueled the fire. But, like, I always want – like, I was always playing women's rugby, like, even when I was, like, at school. You know how there's, like, age restrictions and stuff now? Yeah. Like, never started, used to be, eh? Yeah, as soon as I started playing, right, I was playing against women and getting, like, smoked by women. But, like, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Like, I loved that challenge. A uh, bit different now, but um, I guess, like, looking back, like, that, like, gave me the hunger. Like, I always like going out. I always loved being an underdog. Didn't matter which sport. I'd yeah. choose the, like, success team because, you know, it's more of a challenge. Yeah, yeah, huh? Yeah. No, so, that's cool. That's epic. Yeah. And then you um, obviously here, like, talk us through your, your club journey because um, you're obviously at Ponte B now. Obviously, congratulations for the, the win. Uh, we'll, 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 come, we'll definitely touch back on that. Let's go. Let's go, baby. <laughs> um, but talk us through your um, club journey, like, um, here in Auckland um, and, and, like, how it worked in regards to what club you chose uh, and just how it went about. Yeah, so... Um, like I said, like oh, at the time I was studying at AUT when I moved up um, and like I wanted to play rugby, just didn't know how to kind of like go into the scene because obviously being new to this place, um, or Auckland I should say, uh, mm. it was like hard to find out or how or even like to get started to get with it. Yeah. Um, so it was just like, I was staying at the dorms up at AUT. So I was like walking down and the corner has like McDonald's. And I was walking down to like, go get me a fee. Cause I have a <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that uni life, I was walking down to get me some, you know, McNuggets and um, walk past Tekka. And it was real funny. Cause I was like, man, I'm confused. Like this is a rugby club. Yet there's these girls throwing softballs. Like what the heck is going on here? <laughs> And I was like, oh, yeah, carry on to McDonald's. Ate my McDonald's there, come back. And I was like, man, should I ask? Like, should I just go walk in there? And because I'm, I'm quite shy, so I don't yeah. quite put myself out there. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I should go ask. It. Anyway, I was like, oh, no, nah, come on, just bite the bullet, go ask. And I was like, oh, hey, like, um, are you guys like a softball team or are you just training for rugby? Because you're at a rugby club. Like, <laughs> and then, um, I think it might have been tough. And, oh, I oh, I can't remember who else was there at the time, but it definitely was Tiff. Yeah. And I was like, and she goes, nah, we're a rugby team. Go get your boots and come back down to train. So then that was it. So um, I think your, your father was coaching at the time and I like went back and got my boots and then that was me. Like I played my season at Tekka. Yeah. And then um, like it was heaps of fun. Obviously, um, 
you were quite young at the time. <laughs> well, we're all young, weren't we? <laughs> we're all <baby. laughs> Um But, like, yeah, so played, played my season there, and I guess I was just pretty fortunate that that year it was another World Cup year and all the Blackburns were gone. Mm. Um, and then I got selected into the Auckland Storm squad from mm. there, and I was the only player from second to, that actually cracked the squad. Yeah. So after that, obviously, if I wanted to aspire to do a bit more, um, I had to kind of move clubs into a, a first grade team and like tackle second div at the time. We were just all there, serious but not serious, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, had to move, make the move over the bridge, um, and then moved to Ponsonby, and then I've been there ever since. I can't even remember the year. I'm pretty sure I only played tackle one year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I, it was I just from there. I think it disper- like we dispersed after that eh, and there wasn't a team after us. Yeah, we had oh it was like one more season but we merged with um Glenfield. Oh yeah, so, that's yeah, right. yeah, it was kind of a bit of a iffy year. Yeah. Um, um so yeah, that was probably my club rugby experience. And then obviously like through that uh, meeting Tiff um, and then she was still playing league at the time, so she took me to league as well. She was like, Oh bro, like come play league. So I was like, Oh yo, sweet. Went to Odahu Leopards. Um, they're a cool That's club, cool. but not the club for me. And then I <laughs> ended up, um, I think I had a dash with them. Um, being a new kid on the block, obviously, didn't get much game time, but I had a dash with them. And then I moved over to um, the Richmond Roses where I found my mm-hmm. home. Um, and then I probably moved for league. I moved to Tiara two once. Um, Brewsters once. Um, footy Thanks. got a bit, 15's got a bit more serious because couldn't really commit to league as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because uh, Richmond's a uh, top end team as well. Hey, so it would almost be like trying to maintain two yeah. top levels. Yeah, two top levels. And it was all right for a bit, but then once 15s, I guess the pathways for that, trying to navigate into a um, an NZ squad and then contract that came out, then it was kind of like, oh, I can't really commit. Like, I'm not really allowed. Um, so I go play for a team that doesn't mind me not committing so much just go to one training and then just jam on the Sunday but um yeah obviously Richard will still be my home so th- thankful for them and what they've yeah. given given to me throughout my time playing there yeah 100% and obviously you're at Philly still um after all these years um but one thing I wanted to um ask about about Phillies is because I know I actually mentioned it too but their culture um their team culture and the vibes there is probably one of the best I've been a part of um I'm, I'm pretty sure you'd do the same but talk us through that like how important the culture is there and what it's, what it's like in the in the Ponsonby club yeah so um obviously like within any team like culture's massive like I think if you don't have that right like you're gonna have a hard time doing anything with your team pretty much yeah, um and obviously going to um not saying that Taka didn't have a good culture, like it had a different culture, but um, I found like moving to Ponsonby, like that was really family orientated. Um, not so much, I wouldn't say the club, but the team itself, the Phillies, yeah. um, they would do anything for anyone um, at the drop of a hat. And I think that's what's kept me there so long and obviously got a lot of good mates um, that play within the club mm-hmm. and still there today. But um, like I think culture is just massively important and over the years and the time that I've been there um, it's just growing and continuing to grow um, and that's just a testament to the people that stick around and keep trying to drive that um, within the other girls like we've got a different generation of um, footy players coming through now so um, it's definitely going to be challenging to you know uphold that but I think once someone experiences that vibe mm-hmm. um, that you know, you, you don't want to go anywhere else, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, like, I know for, I was at Rifles for uh, Phillies, but, and I was there for quite a few years, um, mm. but when I came to Phillies, I don't know what it was, eh, it's just, it's really hard to explain, but it was just like, you just enjoyed your footy, like, on and off the field, because there's things that they do in the, to create that team culture um, that has that bond, like, real tight, off the field. Yeah. Um, and- yeah, no, for you, like, like really, you reckon, like, uh, who kind of creates that culture? Is it more coming from like the coach down, or how do you find it? Or is it more within the actual playing group? 
Uh, I think it's a mixture of both. Like, obviously, you could have a coach that doesn't really care about any culture aspect whatsoever. Um, mm-hmm. And we've had moments and times, like, years um, where it hasn't been that great and it's fed down from the top. So I think if it's not fed um, down from coaching, management, um, it makes it really hard to actually connect on a player level. But in saying that, like, it has to be player-driven. Like, you coaches coach. They're, they're not there to try and uphold your standards and whatnot, you know? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. not for them to do. That's for each individual in the team, and that's for the players to keep each other accountable and keep that culture alive and um, just driving some really good standards because good standards drive the culture pretty much. Yeah. Um, and that, and that family vibe, and man, and once everyone's happy, you just end up playing real good footy. So if you're yeah. happy on and off the field, like, you know, you're gonna you're gonna do really well. So yeah, hundred percent. And you guys have like a leadership group within your club level. Like, how how does that work? Um, like for teams that are kind of just whether they don't have a culture or they're struggling to create one or they don't kind of have a structure in place. Like for you guys, how how does it work in terms of like having a leadership group and how does that help with your culture? Yeah, I think um, like through the years, uh, it's gotten better. Like, and that's probably more from exposure um, being uh, players at like a elite level, a international level have brought what they've experienced higher up down into club, which has been really great. Um, I would say definitely for, like, us this year, like the Phillies, like, we've used a lot of things that we've used in Black Ferns and pretty much Auckland, Auckland Storm. So um, I think it's, like, hugely important to have a leadership group, not just, obviously, to set standards and um, kind of uphold um, and drive the culture within the team, but um, just purely for a voice to management, because sometimes that that's not there, that connection's not there, and it's really hard, especially if you're a like, younger player, like, mm. you find it hard to communicate to a coach, and that can be quite daunting, so I think having a leadership group is, like, or those senior players within a team um, is huge, because then you know you've got someone to go to if you've got, you know, any problems, or if you want to know something, um, you know, they can point you to the right people to get some help and stuff like that, but um, I think, like, like, that leadership group is hugely important and I think it's more not like just talking wise but actually leading by example like you can't do anything if you don't walk the walk like man yeah. no way no one's gonna listen to you when you talk you know yeah, yeah. Um, so you gotta lead by example in that respect um but I think that that group um as long as you've got a good mix of experience um forwards backs um some someone from a younger generation so that they can have their input and then you have some more experienced people I think you're going to have a pretty good mix yeah that's cool that's real cool to hear and that, um because hopefully like for other teams that might be trying to create that and struggling with that um hearing it from from the champs no nah, um is awesome because it will help obviously grow the game and that um but obviously recently most recent you guys uh made it through to the grand final uh which was has been a long time coming. What kind of um, like emotions and stuff was running through your guys' head probably that week leading up to that game? Um, <laughs> I, I might be the wrong person to ask these kinds of questions. <laughs> um, for me, like, I I don't get like too phased about games. Like, I like I knew like no, it's a final, but for me, it's just another game. Like, I've had quite a few injuries where um, now in my playing career, like, every game you've just got to play it like it's your last game, you know? Yeah, so um, when I go out, I just want to enjoy my footy. But um, obviously we had the semi-final, and that was, um, you know, no easy game. Finals never are. Yeah. Um, and a lot of our team probably hasn't been in a final. So, um, you know, we actually went, through the season quite quite easily, you know, um, playing some good footy, um, apart from that first game against Rewa where we got beaten. But I think our team probably thought we had it in the bag leading into semis and finals. Mm. Um, and that's all good because we had been playing quite well. But finals footy is so different, eh? Like yeah, anything can happen. It, it, 
you know, you could be the fittest team, but it all comes down to heart in the end. But I guess the, the nerves leading in, like, um, I think we had, you know, some pretty good trainings. And what was really cool is that we'd done, like, a bit of a jersey presentation on Thursday. Oh, cool. Which was real, like, real awesome. So they got some old girls and just to talk about the Phillies and the history. Because um, even myself, like, I don't really know the history, like, way back when. Like, I only know from, you know, Bindi or someone like that. But, yeah. Um, like these these were the women that had started the club way back when um and it was just cool hearing how it had all began yeah um so that for me that gave me a little bit more motivation being like nah looking at these ladies and I was like oh you know that number eight back then like she looks like a <laughs> real hearty you know, she looks hearty man like you wouldn't want to mess with her you know yeah. so um I guess that for me that night like, gave me quite a bit of motivation like I was definitely inspired um by the past eight um which was really cool but yeah as in terms of nerves like yeah I don't really get nervous I think it wasn't until I actually like ran out on the field and I was like oh man like this has to be the best game we've played like all year like yeah. this is gonna be a battle. Uh, it's gonna be the team who can be like you know the most composed it's like I know we've got it like I know we've got the team to do it but we need to keep our heads so um yeah, ended up being an interesting final. Very interesting. That's for sure. <laughs> Man, I was, I was fucking happy when it was finished, that's for sure. Oh, really? Yeah, was probably so one of those last 30 finals. minutes, last 30 minutes were stressful. I reckon. Yeah, that was probably one of the best finals that I'd seen in, I think, in, in Auckland in general, um, to have, like, two top teams just really battle it up, like, right to the end. So, massive congrats to you guys and um, obviously the Phillies Club. Um, as well, um, but you mentioned you made obviously Auckland Storm in there, and h- how was that when you first made it, throwing back to when you were in Gizzy, when you kind of had that dream of, you know, playing amongst some of the best, and then to actually be in that environment, like what was that like? Yeah, oh, man, like for me, it was like a bit of a, a little bit of a dream come true, because I just never thought I'd kind of get that far you know you always like hope and dream but um until it's like a reality like I'm just like oh yeah it is what it is yeah um I remember that first year like I was real like I was so grateful um but I still knew that that wasn't the best because all the black ferns weren't there yeah. so I was thinking you know like yeah play footy this year and then the next year would be the real test whether or not I'm actually got what it takes um to actually crack this team. And back then, like, it was, like, there was no Waikato, no counties, no Northland, no North Harbour. It was just that whole Auckland region was just pulled into one team, and that was the Auckland Storm. So if you think about it and you think about the Storm, like, it was a very prestigious team um, way back when because of just the capture of it, like, the player, player catchment pool was just massive. Like, you're going all the way from Hamilton to right yeah, up to the so um yeah the next year when I got selected like man I was so, like that was a dream come true it didn't bother me that I was on the bench whatever I didn't care <laughs> just, <laughs> just to be amongst it involved in that, yeah in that environment and um Daryl and David at the time um obviously haven't had top coaches before so I just like absolutely loved every minute of um being being coached under them yeah 100% mm-hmm. that's so cool when Actually, just quickly touching on that, um, for you, like, how, um, in regards to, like, coaching and that, how important do you reckon it is or how much of an influence do you reckon coaches have just on players in general, um, whether it be in their performance or, or off the field? With coaching? Yeah, like, cut out just for a little bit there. Oh, there's that dodgy 099 internet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it just how much coaches have an influence on players. Yeah. Oh, I think it's immense. Um, and especially like for younger girls, like I know this year, like a couple of our clubs here in Auckland have had some um, pretty different kind of coaches this year. Yeah. Um, and you actually see that within the team and you see how hard they struggle. And it was actually quite sad to see like, obviously Maris and Rifles um, not play to their potential purely just maybe because of coaching it might be other things too but yeah. um I think coaches play an immense role um especially within club rugby and like if they don't 
nurture the players coming through, um, you're just going to lose them straight off the bat because um, if they're not getting anything or they're not learning, especially if they're quite a good player, if they're not learning, uh, mm. they'll go somewhere else where they can. And that happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, but you can always get, it doesn't matter what kind of coach, you can always get something from a coach. It doesn't matter whether you've been coached at a high level, you know, and then you're coming back down into club. There's always something you can get um, from every coach that you've been coached by. But um, I've had some, obviously, some influential coaches in my time. Um, mm. Daryl and Davida being probably the biggest one in my um, probably playing career in Auckland. Yeah. Um, like I absolutely loved playing under them, probably because it was all new to me and I just, you know, I was like a sponge. I just soaked everything up that they said to me. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, like you get something out of, out of every coach, but they are definitely an integral part of a, of a team, that's for sure. Yeah, no, that's epic. And, um, and then obviously moving up into international um, from what was a dream became obviously a reality. Um, how was that first phone call when you got caught up um, into the Black Pins? Yeah, it was, um, I think I was at work at the time. So I was working out at Howler's, uh, would have been like my lunch break. And like everyone knows like the day when they're calling people and it's like, oh, and then all your mates are like, oh, have you got a call yet? Have yeah. you got a call yet? <laughs> um, and you're like, nah, nah, nah. And then it's kind of like, you kind of don't know what order they do it in. Like, I think more now you kind of know that if you haven't made it, you get the call first um, because you've got more of a priority as in terms of they need to talk you through why and what you can do. But I think back then it was just a bit unknown. Um, and then I just remember getting this call and saying that um, congratulations that I've made the team and like I'm real humble so I didn't really like sound too excited but man inside I I was so happy and, yeah. um, like, and he was like oh did you hear me properly <laughs> oh yeah okay thank you and then, like, like that was it and I like got off the phone and I was like stoked like called mum and I was like oh my gosh like you know I've just made the team blah blah so um, I just remember like that was awesome um, getting that phone call but I think it doesn't matter how long you've been in the team um, you just always dread those phone calls because you just don't know you never know yeah. <laughs> you just never know um, so every time you get pulled into a squad it's um, definitely a blessing um, and definitely cherish each moment because you actually don't know when it'll be your last pretty much yeah for sure and um Obviously, Blackfins is known right around the world for being one of the top class um, footy clubs. But one thing that um, one thing that they are known for is the haka. Um, how's that like um, being involved in that? Obviously, for the first time, but then just in general, like when you guys do your uh, prepare for your matches and that, um, how how or what's the feelings like when you guys uh, come around the haka? Um, ah, girls love it, eh? Um, especially like, it's real hard to explain. Like, um, I think like you hear the anthem and that hits and you're like, oh man, like, well, can't believe I'm here, you know, and I, I, all the girls will probably vouch for it. You go, go through so many different emotions, like when you're, you know, singing the anthem and that, because that's all you dream of is wanting to wear a black jersey and sing the national anthem. Yeah. Um, but I think we're quite lucky that we have the haka. And then because, yeah. you know, some people can get amped from an anthem, right? But then we go into it. If you're facing us, you have to listen to our haka. And yeah. that's where we flip it and we, like, up the ante and we just, all our emotions just come out in that haka. And, like, I love it, eh? It G's me up so much. Like, sometimes I'm nearly, like, blacked out from doing the hackers like so oh, and then, oh I'm so dizzy I need to stop like yeah. you know I just mouth the words because I'm just going so hard that I feel like I'm gonna faint like yeah. um but yeah you or oh, I, I don't know about the other girls but for me like I always go hard in the haka obviously being proud Maori being you know um proud to be a Kiwi um yeah. you, you always just get that something extra um when you do when you do the haka that's for sure um, and I think we're quite lucky and we, we're quite blessed that we actually have that um, in our culture. And, like, all the girls love doing it in camp. Like, we have haka practice just to make sure that all the young ones know, um, all the newbies that are coming through know, and then 
um, about the only time we really practice is on captain's run. We just practice on the field, just go for a run through, and then that's it, leave it for the day. Um, oh, yeah. Go hard on the day. Yeah. No, that's sick, and I love watching it. Um, I think you're right, though. A lot of the girls go real hard out with it, and you can see the passion, but could just imagine, like, well, I feel sorry for the teams that actually have to stand there and face it, eh? Because, like, what can you do? You can't do anything. <laughs> you just got to try and take it in. I feel sorry for the Kiwis that are playing in the Aussie team. <laughs> yeah, true. I like it all this now. <laughs> it must suck. <laughs> I know. Um, but for you, like, what's probably one of the most memorable moments um, that you've had um, in terms of rugby, whether it be Black Ferns or, or um, at Auckland Storm? Um, what's one that pretty much stands out for you? Um. Oh, man, I probably have a few. I'd say my debut for Black Ferns would definitely be um, up there. Um, people that know the story, it was only 30 seconds. Um, no. <laughs> but all good. All good. <laughs> grateful. All grateful. Good. Yeah. Um, still stoked. Um, I was quite fortunate. It was at Eden Park. Um, oh, that's cool. And back, yeah, and back then, um, a lot of the girls didn't get to wow pretty much from then, like, a lot of the girls didn't get to debut at home. They were always playing away. So um, I was quite fortunate that was kind of like the era where it switched, where there were a lot more test matches um, and a lot more at home. So, yeah, I was real grateful for that. Um, that was a big one. Um, winning World Cup, that was Ooh. unreal. That was something. That's cool. Yeah, it was. That was like, oh, man. Obviously, that was such, like a pinnacle event and just such an awesome moment. Um, like winning that, like it was surreal, pretty much. Like even at halftime, like I remember the game and it was just like because they they were upright, so well we were pretty much like neck and neck. And yeah. like I remember talking to my mum after she was like, "Oh, we, you know, we knew you guys had it, but we were just so like stressed." But you know what? Like when we were in the change room, like it was so calm. Like yeah. it was just just knowing that we were going to win and we were going to, like, smoke them. And then when we came out, everyone was just looking around and we just had, like, this mean feeling, like, yeah, we got this. We got this yeah. in the bag. And then um, to win, obviously, it's just unreal. Like, that's an experience you can't can't never forget. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Just there's so many moments. And I think, like, being a player, like, you just got to cherish even, like, the smallest ones. Like, I remember, like, playing club, club rugby and like storm and all the great players like i've played with especially in the storm mm. like i've played with some of the greatest black ferns that you'd ever ever come against so um i think just cherishing all those all those little moments that you don't even realize uh you know that are quite influential yeah down the track yeah 100 percent. that's so cool man and um obviously a lot of success um but for yourself have you um come across at times um specific like setbacks or challenges um along your footy just probably you know just a tad um that probably like maybe made you question whether or not you're going to keep going or kind of just really took a toll on your your mental health in that uh, <laughs> you're like just a tad but man there's heaps yeah. <laughs> um i think you'd be silly to say that you don't go through it like mm. Um, like for me, I remember my injuries, like I had two major surgeries while well, I've had three now, but lucky my third one was like come at the same time as COVID. So it was like, oh yes, yeah, so I don't miss any rugby, but <laughs> um, like the previous ones, like I did my shoulder quite young um, and it was tough. Like I was naughty and didn't go to trainings because I was like, oh, what's the point? You know, I've got a bunk shoulder, no point going. Um, so I like hit some lows there and then with my knee, like you just start playing really good. Um, and then you get a setback like that and do your ACL and it was just like I done it at sevens and I was like, Oh man, you know, like not again. Just when you're like playing real good footy. Um, but it's not even that. Even like within I'd say like black firms, like I found it tough when I first went in. Um kind of Oh, no, not the first year, maybe the second year. Um, not being selected in the squad or, like, you know, you're not in the 15 or you're not on the on the bench and that, that kind of takes a toll on you too. And mm. um, I guess 
when I was a lot younger, like that's what I had. I was just, you know, so invested in rugby that um, just so tunnel vision that I was just like rugby, rugby, rugby. Um, and when you've only got rugby, man, and things like that happen, you know, it kind mm-hmm. of takes a toll on you and you just, you know, it's something minor, but, um, you know, it can be so detrimental to your health. Um, just focusing on, you know, thinking that it's so negative, but really, you know, you just got to look at bigger picture and you're like, oh, hey, well, actually, I'm still in the squad, um, still yeah. still in here, so um, be grateful for that and just keep working hard. But, you know, when you're young, you kind of don't, like, see stuff like that. Yeah. You kind of just think, oh, I'm not playing, like, you know? Yeah, the attitude. But, um, like, those experiences, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't trade it for anything because it makes you who the play, you know, the player that I am today. Like, I remember sitting behind Bindi, Jay, like, and that's all good because look at them, they're the best flankers in the world, you know? So yeah. um, I learned a lot from them, um, that's for sure. But, you know, everyone has their own path and it's just quite hard not to compare yourself to someone in a similar position as you. Like, I think that's the biggest thing in footy. Like, someone says, oh, so-and-so is a flanker, oh, you know, they might just rise to the top just like that, you yeah. know, in a heartbeat. And But you, you, you're you navigating through all this other kind of stuff and your past like this, where it is, it's gone like that. And you're yeah. just, yeah, why, why, why can't I be like that? Like, I'm just as good, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think it's just finding ways um, and of like, obviously, knowing now, being a lot older, that just having support and having friends that he can talk to, um, man, that helps heaps, eh? Because if you didn't have anything, anyone to talk to, you'd just be just like this bottled up mess, I reckon. Well, I would be anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely family, um, good support networks, um, just being able to have like open conversations. But that that's obviously come with time um, and a lot more awareness now within the game. That's yeah. for sure. Um, around obviously mental, um, oh, like I said, mental awareness. Um, like we actually have people that deal with that now within the teams and actually teach you how um, to navigate through that kind of stuff. And, yeah. you know, they're always on call if you, you know, you're having a bit of a hard time because they found like with footy players, they're just so invested that when one little thing goes wrong, it's just. Yeah. So. Um, I think for me, like, injuries were massive. Um, selections are always tough. And even, like, now, like, at the moment, like, I've, you probably remember me when I was, when I first came out, like, I was tiny. I was, like, 75 kgs or something. Well, I'm, like, pushing 95 now. So it's, yeah. like, even now, like, I have battles, you know, I'm, I'm, I should be smaller and all of this and that. But um, at the end of the day, if you're, like, if you're playing good footy, like, obviously there's things that can make you better. But if you're still playing good footy just try not to stress so much like everything else will come if you're working hard putting in work um that's all you really need to do to don't need to worry about anything else that's just if you're putting in work then just leave it at that it's the opposite when you're running out going having mcdonald's and you're still like pushing on 95 and then then you have a problem you know (laughs) um but yeah so i would say like i still go through challenges now um but i'm just yeah like I said, have that support network um, and people I can go to if I'm feeling kind of like that or just someone to like outlet to and then, but normally I'm pretty good, like I'll outlet and then I'm like that and it kind of like drives me and it fuels me in a way, like, yeah, <laughs> like I remember getting told like I got palmed off at the first club club game this year, yeah, like three times in a row. And okay. then, yeah, and then I had... Um, our um, Black Ferns coach come up to me before the final and he was like telling me he was like oh you know you can't you can't have what happened to you in the first round um and I was just like taken back a bit like what the heck like is this dude really saying that like yeah it's my first game back he's like you know you play of the year like you know put that kind of thing on me and that that yeah. was quite that was quite big and then I kind of you know, sat back a bit and I was like, wow, did he really just say that? And then I was like, nah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, okay, you too. Don't worry, you just <laughs> filled my fire, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool though. Um, so I, you know, I kind of went to that dark place, but you know, and then I, I just used it as fuel and, you know, um, you know, sometimes you you can't be the best at, you know, you can't, some days you're just not good. You just got to accept that, I think. Yeah. Um, and just roll with it, but know that 
you know, that's not going to be every day. That was just the off day or, you know, yeah, kind of thing and just bounce from it. Mm. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. And, like, um, actually just taking on a little bit like that, and it, uh, is there, like, stuff that you do to kind of help? I know you talked about support network, but is there um, stuff that you do that kind of just help you relax, take the one off footy, um, maybe like after a loss or something, uh, some people, it can get to them quite a lot and then, you know, they beat themselves up. But for you, is there um, like something that you do, whether it be go, f- I don't know, go fishing or whatever, kind of help you chill out? I think for me, like if I can get home, like that's my reset is to go home back to Gizzy. Yeah. Um, like when, you know, the schedule can be quite full on. Um, and then when I get the chance, or I've had enough, I'm like, oh, bro, I need to tap out. Like, I need to go go back home, just reset, um, get family time, and then come back. Um, if you're in, like, camp environments, it's a bit different. Um, you just got to find ways where you can just tune out. And most of the time, it's just hanging out with the girls uh, yeah. and just having some fun and just doing, like, random stuff like playing cards or, you know, going for a coffee, just little things like that, just not so much into the rugby side of things but I'm quite lucky because I can switch off anyway so I normally like to if I'm in camp I'll take like books or like just jam music like that's me I'm I'm happy if I've got music so yeah um I don't really think of too much about games um in general leading up but it's more like like you said like I'll beat myself up over a loss um but at the same time I'll find something to like try you know oh next time I'll do this better next time I'll do that and then I'll leave it at that um yeah. I won't dig, dig too much into it so like you can wallow in it but just not <laughs> not forever <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> um but at the same time like like I said like done some work around with um sports psych and they kind of help you navigate um uh they call it like a blue head red head and oh, yeah. it's like when you're playing good what what does that look like and what do you do when you're playing good like that might be your prep leading into it what not um if you had a bad game then you review that and be like okay so what did you do leading up to it that was different did you change something or um in your prep that made you in that red mindset so um it's quite interesting that the work that they do now um and you can actually like, pick things up so like this year like i found out that if i'm keeping myself busy right up till game time like I play better if I'm just sitting around doing nothing I won't play as good and I found that well I kind of knew that but um not working this year and studying um I found that I had a lot more time on my hands so I was thinking about footy too much um and when I was actually kept myself busy for the whole morning man I played way better than what I would normally or what I had previously been playing like so um, yeah, it's just quite interesting, all the um, guidance and support that they have now to help you around everything like that. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool, actually. Like, um, interesting to hear and stuff like that, because obviously prep comes into it a lot, and everyone prepares, um, obviously, different. Um, but, yeah, I think overthinking the game sometimes. <laughs> you can hear some people Playing like the that. game before. <laughs> it's actually yeah. They're playing the game three days before playing the game. <laughs> They've um, scored so many tries and then it comes to <laughs> Then it doesn't happen. You're like, damn. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> that happened in my head? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but that's pretty cool. That's that's really good to hear. And um, I'm sure it will help actually a lot of people as well in terms of like reflection and stuff like that. Um, and not uh, not dragging on that loss right into the new week. Um, yeah, hard out. there's actually like a, there's a real good book um, by, I think it's K- Kerry Evans or yeah. C-E-R-I, Kerry, yeah, something like that, um, but it's called Under Pressure, and that talks about that blue head, red oh, head true. mindset, yeah, and how to deal with um, just uh, obviously, because like playing footy, you come under like pressure all the time, like there might be like that one crucial moment you needed to be like, execute something under pressure and then you yeah. see how many times people knock the ball on or something yeah. like that so it like speaks about times like that but what you can do um to help you get there kind of thing so it's a really good book yeah oh look at that shout out everyone there yeah, get it read it <laughs> i think i'm gonna get it too <laughs> um but um just wrapping up um here um sis uh, in terms of like looking ahead it's a bit hard obviously with covid and 
and whatnot. Um, now day one lockdown already. I know. Two point oh day one. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Um, but for you, like, is there like a goal or a, like a dream or that that you're still yet to achieve, whether it be footy or outside of footy, that you're looking forward to um, coming up? Uh, I think, yeah, like COVID, COVID's really done a number this year, hasn't it? Auntie Renee. <laughs> we won a championship, so stoked about that. Um, been chasing one of those for a very long time, so club yeah. championship, that was awesome to get. Um, I think I would definitely, like, I'm getting on now, so I, I will be retiring soon. Wait, what? Um, next couple of years that's for sure i, I definitely want to do another world cup um mm-hmm. if i get the obviously the opportunity to be selected that's definitely a big goal of mine is to do a world cup um and i'd want to win another championship with the storm um mm-hmm. but that's just that's my probably two big tickets um and then leading into that like i just after footy like obviously my playing career i just want to help you know young girls and um just help them get to where they want to go pretty much so I'd like to move into I think coaching yeah. like I feel like I quite quite enjoy coaching well I like helping our young girls because obviously me being from Gizzy like I had nothing and then came up to Auckland kind of navigated my way through so um, if I can go back to like obviously my community and help them there um, that's that's like a big passion of mine I think and just seeing seeing the talent in girls and just trying to help them progress further yeah. um, you know, whatever their inspirations may be. But, um, yeah, I think that's me. And then hopefully I get an apprenticeship. Let's <laughs> go. Course. So, um, yeah, if anyone's listening and wants to hook me up, yeah. Let's I'm go. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, because uh, have you just started that uh, study for that course this year? Or? Yeah, so it's just doing like, um, so with 40 and that, I just switched it up because I thought, oh, you know, it'd be a bit different. Um, and go study and it was more like I went back home um, and no one can do you know electricity is a bit different like you can't just go oh yeah I'm gonna do this you know it's, yeah. a, bit more, it's a bit more dangerous than building but when I went home they like uh, my family like whacked up a batch in like a day you know yeah. and I was like oh well there was no one to wire it up so I was like oh why don't I just go study that you know and that'll be like, quite handy to have when I go back home yeah um, and to help help my people people out there so um i thought oh yeah i'll go do this um and i just had the opportunity a bit more time on my hands so i thought it would be like an awesome opportunity but um yeah so i started the course um early in the year covid's kind of messed it up but um meant to be finishing in october um, oh, they were going to bring our exam forward so that we could you know get on to getting apprenticeships and whatnot but then yep uh COVID 2.0 came <laughs> kind of all it's kind of all up in the air now so um not too sure what's going to happen with it but um I'll just keep tracking along anyway yeah uh, no biggie something will fall into place no doubt yeah for sure well um that's so cool um to hear and exciting as well so if anyone is listening um help us us out you know, come through, slide into her DMs um, <laughs> <laughs> and help her out. But um, all the best, obviously, with that. Um, and obviously, 42, um, well, it's meant to be FPC soon, but um, I guess we'll probably know more <laughs> again <laughs> after this COVID. We don't know. Um, well, well, they said three days, eh? But it's probably going to end up being like three weeks. I reckon. I reckon. I yeah. don't know. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, who knows? I think, yeah. Personally, like, haven't heard anything, but mm. personally, I think I don't think we'll be playing any rugby anytime soon again. Well, um, if you don't, what a way to finish with that uh, championship. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky for the others, but hey, <laughs> that was pretty mad. But um, just, just want to say thanks for your time today. Obviously, I would say you're a busy person, but now that we're in lockdown, everyone's got time. So, um, you, um <laughs> so we're grateful for that <laughs> obviously we finally made it um but yeah just want to say thank you obviously stay safe and um yeah appreciate your time today as well thank you sis it's been awesome good chat yeah very good chat um obviously for those that are listening um if you haven't already obviously subscribe we'll put chums um url down below if you've got any questions if you've got um some hookups for apprenticeship help this is out 
anything, you know, uh, we'll put it down below. But until next time, thanks everyone for tuning in.